Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show with Chase Lawson. I'm so glad you're tuning in today. We've got a great episode in store. For those just finding this show, my name is Chase Lawson. I've always been a huge personal finance fanatic, and I am the author of the best-selling book, Financial Freedom, Breaking the Chains to Independence and Creating Massive Wealth, which you can find on Amazon. My goal with this show is to help everyday people like you and me better understand and take control of their finances. And so each week I cover a different topic and dissect it into something that's simple and easy to understand. Today's topic is an extremely important one and can have major impact on your life. So make sure you listen closely. So let's get started. You may have heard the phrase location, location, location before. Usually when people say this, they're talking about real estate. After all, where you live in a city can have a big impact on the price and size of homes as well as the future property appreciation. However, I think that phrase certainly goes well beyond real estate. Where you live will impact you in all aspects of personal finance and beyond into your personal life as well, including politics, socioeconomic factors, and more. For example, I live in Austin, Texas, which happens to be a more liberal city and a traditionally conservative state. Whichever party is in power within your state or locality will get to create laws that could impact the way in which you live. Living in California, Massachusetts, or New York is a lot different than living in South Carolina, Texas, or Alabama. And it's important to understand that local politics can impact your daily life as your mayor or governor can tell you what you can or cannot do, how much you have to pay in taxes, and more. I've had the privilege of living in a handful of states so I've personally gotten to experience some of that on my own. I've lived in South Carolina, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Massachusetts briefly, and now Texas. So I carry that perspective of knowing what it's like to have lived in different places. Obviously there's far reaching implications around your daily life based on where you live, but there's also huge implications around your financial life. This includes both the cost of living as well as income potential. Cost of living is the amount of money needed to cover basic expenses such as food, housing, taxes, and healthcare. A 2018 survey conducted by global HR firm Mercer found that within the US, the costliest cities are New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, and Boston in that order. You can find calculators online that will help you compare one city to another in terms of its cost of living and will help you get a good feel for how different cities stack up to one another when it comes to the cost of restaurants, groceries, transportation, utilities, entertainment, childcare, clothing, rent, and more. If a particular city carries a higher cost of living than another, then to have the same standard of living, you'll have to earn more to account for that. When I graduated from college, I knew I wanted to move somewhere new, step outside my comfort zone a bit, and challenge myself. I had lived up and down the East Coast my whole life, most of which was within the Carolinas. And so while I was still young, I thought it was the perfect time to take a bit of a risk and move somewhere new. Cost of living was one of the factors I used when deciding where to live. And when I was going out for promotion a few years ago at my job, there was an opportunity for me to take a role in California if I wanted to, but the income would be the same regardless if I stayed in Austin or moved to California or New York or anywhere else. So I wouldn't have been able to do as much or have the life I have now had I moved. So cost of living is definitely something to heavily consider. How far will your money take you? And if you're moving to a higher cost of living area, are you making more income to account for that? Or will you have to stretch your dollars even further? Thankfully, my parents helped raise me right and I got to learn a bit about this from them. My stepdad took a job right outside of Boston, Massachusetts the summer before I started eighth grade. And when my parents went up there to check out houses, they realized that you can't get near as much house in Massachusetts as you can in New Hampshire. So they ended up buying a house in New Hampshire, 40 minutes north of Boston. Since your finances play such a big role in what you can do in life and when you can retire and more, this is so important to really consider where you live. It's fun living in cool cities, but what are you getting from that? Are you digging yourself into a deeper hole or are you able to thrive and hit your financial goals? I would love to live in a place like San Diego or San Francisco, but I know that if I move there, I won't be able to save and invest how I want to and I'd have to work several more years. I often hear of people who live in downtown New York City 
Manhattan, where you have to pay an arm and a leg for a studio apartment that's probably about the size of this office that I'm in. And many of these people are barely getting by. They're living paycheck to paycheck and maybe struggling to get out of debt, but they don't know anything else. Maybe they grew up in the city and that's home to them, so, that, so they want to stay there. Or maybe they like being in the Big Apple, the city that never sleeps. But if you're just barely getting by, you should probably look at living elsewhere. According to rent.com, the average rent in New York City for a studio apartment is $3,300.25 per month. A one bedroom is $4,434.49 and a two bedroom is $5,622.72. As I mentioned, I live in Austin. The average two bedroom apartment here costs only $1,737.98 difference of almost $4,000 a month. That's crazy. Alternatively, I know people who work in downtown New York City who choose to live in Connecticut and make that commute daily, which should be highly considered if you do plan to work in a place like New York City. Rental rates can vary based on where exactly you live, but estimates I was able to find show you can save around 35 to 50% on housing alone from living somewhere like Greenwich, Stanford, or Norwalk, Connecticut, compared to New York City. And you typically get more square footage as well, so you have much more for much less. Even using the studio apartment as, as an example, by living in Connecticut, you could likely pay anywhere from $1,155 to $1,650 less per month in housing alone. Now yes, you will have a farther commute of 45 minutes to 75 minutes, most likely each way, and you will have to factor in a few hundred dollars a month in train and potentially subway fees, but you're still coming out so much further ahead. You don't have to live in Manhattan, especially if you're barely getting by. Life is full of sacrifices, so is it more important for you to live in a shoebox in the heart of New York City, or have significantly more space and money, but a bit of a longer commute? According to bestplaces.net, a salary of $6,000 per month in New York City is comparable to $3,375 per month in Stanford, Connecticut, when you factor in the full cost of living. Perhaps one of the biggest factors to consider though is that of taxes. There are three primary types of taxes to consider, sales tax, property tax, and income tax. Sales tax is charged on retail transactions and certain services. Most states charge sales tax and then some cities impose additional sales taxes. Currently, five states in America have no sales tax whatsoever. Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon. Property tax is tax paid on property owned by an individual or corporation. This can vary widely, but it will impact you, especially if you ever plan to purchase a home. However, even if you only rent, Property owners do bear the burden of that cost, which they will then pass on to their tenants, so you'll still likely be impacted by this. While New Hampshire charges no sales tax, they make up for this with property tax, as according to WalletHub, they charge the third highest real estate property tax in America at an effective rate of 2.2%. However, many states may also charge property tax on vehicles as well, as currently about half of US states levy a tax on vehicles with Virginia being the highest at 4.05%. Last but certainly not least is income tax. This typically can have the largest impact on an individual, especially as they get further into their career and continue to make more money. Obviously, we're all subject to federal income tax, which is a marginal system, as Zach and I discussed in our episode on marginal taxes, where the more money you earn, the more is ultimately subject to higher tax rates as you go up into different tax brackets. However, depending on where you live, you may also be responsible for state and local income taxes. Currently, nine states charge no state income tax. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. I love the fact that I don't see state or local income taxes taken out of my paycheck. That ultimately means I get to take home even more money. This is another reason why New Hampshire charges among the highest property taxes as they don't collect sales or income tax, so they need to raise money somewhere. As of 2020, the states with the highest income tax rates include California, Hawaii, New Jersey, Oregon, Minnesota, Washington DC, New York, 
Iowa, Wisconsin, Maine, and South Carolina. All of these states charge top earners taxes of 7 to 13.3%. As I mentioned before, I could have taken a role in California a few years ago, but for single tax filers, income over $45,753 is taxed at 8% and income from $57,824 to $295,373 is taxed at 9.3%. So this can really add up. And some of these states allow for local income taxes as well. For example, in New York City, you could be responsible for up to 3.88% in local income taxes, whereas California doesn't charge any local income taxes. But they do have the highest state income tax rates and among the highest sales taxes. So do your homework as this could have huge implications in your livelihood as well as how early you can retire and what you can do at retirement. In 2019, a single tax filer making $100,000 per year would take home $77,104 after taxes in Austin, whereas the same person would take home only $68,204 after taxes in New York City, a difference of about $9,000 or roughly 9% of your income going to additional taxes. Since New York is already so much more expensive to live in, having $9,000 less per year to try and live on will cause you to have to make even more sacrifices. So location is huge. If you ever are in a position where you're looking at potentially relocating for work, make sure you do this research ahead of time, as even if you do get a pay increase, you may be worse off. So use this knowledge to your benefit when you negotiate your pay. Thanks so much everyone for checking out another episode of the Financial Freedom Show with Chase Lawson. Remember, location has drastic implications on both political and socioeconomic factors. If you've only ever lived in one spot, perhaps be open to living somewhere different that may allow your dollars to go further. It can be hard to find ways to make additional income sometimes, especially if you don't want to take on a second job or a side hustle. But where you choose to live could allow you a way to keep more of your income without having to necessarily work any harder. I hope those of you listening found this episode to be helpful and at least intriguing. What are your thoughts? Have you ever sat down and considered this idea? Are you struggling to get by due to so much of your money going to taxes and rent? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you did like this episode, please be sure to hit that thumbs up or leave a review. That helps me out greatly and helps others find this episode. And as I mentioned before, if you have not yet subscribed, please do so so that you don't miss any of the latest content and share with someone who may need to hear this. Together, we can help make the world a much better, more financially literate place. Until next time, stay safe and go get them.